In this video I'm going to take you through a tools exercise for SketchUp for Schools. Now what do I mean by tools exercise? Well in SketchUp for Schools in the workspace we have this tools menu on the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to take you through a few of the tools that are available to you here and they will be the ones that are probably most commonly used. Uh, I'm going to remind you that we've done an exercise already, the uh, basic workflow exercise, and as a result of that exercise we've produced a model which has nine rectangular blocks uh, laid out in a grid 150 millimeters apart, and these are the dimensions of the blocks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that drawing there, and then we're going to transform these blocks to look like this. Uh, on the right hand side here you see I have something of a key to demonstrate what we're going to do or describe what we're going to do. It is slightly cryptic so you will need to follow along uh, but once we've actually done it hopefully these little notes or annotations down the right hand side here will make a little more sense than what they might do right now. Please bear with me. Uh, hopefully as I say it will all become clear as we move along. So I'm just going to switch over to SketchUp, please uh, follow along, uh, pause the video so that you can do what I do, uh, I'm going to do one shape at a time, please pause between each shape, uh, and then you can follow along and do the same thing, uh, feel free to rewind and repeat as often as you like or need. So with that, I'm going to switch across to SketchUp. We have the basic workflow blocks. Um, you may want to save it. I'm not going to do that right now. It's just going to take too much time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the first block here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the arc tool. Now the tools that come down here. I have the select tool, the erase tool, the bucket we're not going to touch. We have the line tool and I will use a line in a minute. But um, other than the fact that we've got a straight line and a freehand line, I very seldom use the freehand line the line tool is just about there. Um, while I remember, it's always worth remembering that this uh, menu over here in the panels, you have an instructor panel. And this is context sensitive. So if I have the line to tool, it'll give me help about the line tool. If I have the select tool, it'll give me information about the select tool or the arrays or whichever one I'm using. Uh, it does help and it does give some good information and it'll teach you all sorts of interesting stuff that you may not know otherwise like how do the modifiers work and what you can do to change the way the tool works. Uh, I'm not going to have it up during the video because I think it's going to be distracting but you may find it useful to have it up while you are drawing and learn a little bit about the tools as we go along. I really am only going to demonstrate some of the basics. I'm not going to go into depth and you'll learn quite a bit from the instructor tool. So we got past here, below the pencil tool we have the arc tool. When we click on that we get four different types of arcs. Uh, the two that we use most often will be this one, uh, which is an un what's called an unlocated plane. It allows us to do a curve where we click on the center and then uh, prescribe an arc. And then this one which is the two point arc and that's the one we're going to use this time. So I'm going to click that. That has a shortcut, the shortcut is A. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to snap. You can see I can snap to various places. I can snap to endpoint. Let me zoom in. All right, I'm using a mouse with a scroll wheel, so all I do is roll my scroll wheel. Uh, so I have an endpoint I can snap to. I have a midpoint. I have the line itself. I could snap onto the actual thing. Um, plane. There's no point. What I want to do is I want to snap onto the midpoint. And I'm going to drag, and you can see that that is dragging, and it already knows what it's going to be. It's got some tangent. Uh, I'm going to click, that's going to place the arc. If I double clicked it would place it exactly as it is, but I want to demonstrate at the moment I can change the size of my arc. When I click there it actually knows that it's a half circle and that's what I want to do. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use my push-pull tool and a reminder that's over here or it is the letter P and I'm going to take the surface and I'm going to push it entirely away. Now you can see that because this came right up to the edge it created separate surfaces. There were in fact three separate surfaces. I've taken one of them away with the push-pull tool. I'm now going to take the second one away with the push-pull tool. And there I have a semicircular end on this block. Worth noting is that line and that's because when I did the semicircle tool I snapped onto an edge and it actually created two separate surfaces. So if I don't like that then I can do something a little bit different. So I'm going to zoom out and zoom back in, maybe orbit a little bit. I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse again. 
So I'm going to go back to my arc tool. This time I'm going to click the letter A. I'm going to snap once more to the midpoint. Now this block is very similar to the other one, except it's got a slightly larger width along the green axis. So I'm going to snap midpoint to midpoint. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to snap to half circle. Now because this block that I started with was longer, I now only have two surfaces. This didn't reach that line. Now when I use the push-pull and I take that away, firstly I do it in one move rather than two and secondly I do not get this line down the middle. So if you are going to be doing something like that where you're going to be trimming off a semicircular end, sometimes it's worthwhile making your block just that little bit bigger, draw the arc where you want it and then push-pull away. You'll get a neater finish and you'll only get the one push-pull required. Uh, I did say I was going to pause for you to do that. This is basically the same tool so you can use it the same way in the same time. Uh, but pause the video now and repeat what you've just seen where you select the arc tool, snap midpoint to midpoint, drag it out to half circle, drop it down, use the push-pull tool to cut away the block. You're going to be doing that on this block here and on this block here. So please pause and do that now. Okay, so the next tool that we're going to be looking at is going to be the circle tool. And the circle tool works, as circles do, with a center point and a radius. Uh, now, please note I said radius, not or it, not um, diameter. It works with a radius. Now, what I need to do is if I'm going to place a circle on this block, I need to know where to do it. And I'm going to go back to my good old friends, the guidelines. And they are very underrated. There are different ways of doing this. Uh, and I saw a video recently which suggests that many people do not use the guidelines. But the video did also say it is the best and most correct way of doing so. So I've snapped onto this line at the back. I'm dragging it along the surface, which you can see has got a green arrow. And I'm snapping to midpoint. I'm placing a guideline. My other two guidelines are going to be here. I'm going to move across. Whoop, I didn't want that one. That was basically a double click. And I've used Control Z or Command Z uh, on a Mac, I guess it is. I'm going to drag that across and I'm going to place that at 40 millimeters from one end. And I'm going to do the same from the other end because I'm going to place two circles on this one. So now I've got a place to start my circles or to or locate my. Um, origin, my midpoint. So I'm going to use these two intersections here and here. And the tool itself, there is no circle tool visible here. You're going to come here to the rectangle menu and we have a rectangle that we've used before. A different type of rectangle that you can do on an inclined plane and rotate it. But over here we have a circle. And as soon as I click that circle, I'd like you to see this here. I have sides 60. Now SketchUp does not treat a circle as a proper circle, it treats it as a polygon. And in this case, I've got a 60-sided polygon, which is quite a smooth-looking circle, although it is still a polygon. Uh, and that's because of something I was doing a little earlier. The traditional value that SketchUp will come up with on its own is actually 24 sides. So I just type 24 and hit Enter. As I say, as soon as I select circle, I can type 24 and hit Enter. There are other ways of changing it. I'm going to leave you to watch a video to learn those ways. The main way is select the tool, type the number of sides you want, and hit enter, and you have it. Remember that if I have 24 sides in a circle, then in a polygon, then the angle for the side for the straight edge is 15 degrees, and sometimes you will determine your sides by the angles that you wish to use. Sometimes you will do it by the size of the circle, because small circles can only have a few segments, and sometimes you'll do it by how smooth you want the circle to, be, to appear to be. Uh, play with it as you need to. So you can see that the I have a circle there that's telling me that. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to snap. In this case, I want on the intersection and I'm going to be drawing a circle and I would like a 20 millimeter radius so what I do is I pull out in whatever direction I want to do it I could snap onto another point but that's too big so I'm just going to bring it down over there I'm going to click that's at the moment is 24 millimeters I'm going to type 20 and enter please remember the most accurate way of getting your um, geometry to size is to type the dimension 
otherwise you can snap to something that has had a dimension typed previously. So whether you've laid out guidelines and typed the distance between or a block or something like that, you can snap to other geometry, but at some point or at an early point you need to type your dimensions. If you just drag and drop, you might think that it's 20 millimeters, but it might be 20.23 and an error comes in somewhere along the line. So I've drawn a circle there. I'm going to, while I have my tool active, I'm going to just come over and click on the intersection. And this one, I want 20 millimeters diameter, but you'll notice it says radius. So what I need to do in this case, is to get 20 millimeter diameter, I need to divide by two, or calculate a piece of paper in your head, whatever you like, come up with number 10 as the radius and hit enter and I have a smaller circle. Now, what I can do with that is I'm going to switch back across to my push-pull tool over here. I'm going to select that surface which has been bounded inside the circle and I'm going to drag and I'm going to drag down. Now, if I keep dragging down, it'll drag it out through the bottom and keep on going as long as I want. But what I really want to do is snap to this bottom surface here or this bottom edge and as soon as you do that, what it does is create a hole through the shape. And you can see it's a hole because when I look from the underside, I can see the guidelines. Uh, and so that's a very useful trick is to drag and snap it there and SketchUp automatically knows to remove the bottom surface. The alternative that I can do is come over to this uh, circle that I've drawn here and I can pull it upwards. And in this case, I want it to 10. So I use push pull, type the value 10 and away we go. So I'd like you to go away and do that. The last thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to clear up the guidelines that I used to lay down the circle, or these two circles, because they're going to get in the way of my next uh, exercises. But please go ahead, use the guidelines, find the centers of the circles. Uh, as I say, 40 millimeters from each end and in the center this way. Place the two circles, 20 millimeter diameter, 20 millimeter sorry, 20 millimeter radius for the first one, 20 millimeter diameter or 10 millimeter radius for the second. This circle here, we're gonna push downwards and cut through this one, we're gonna pull up by 10 millimeters. So please pause and do that now. Right, so I'm repositioning over to this block here. And what I'm gonna do is a very similar thing to what we've just done. I'm going to use my tape measure tool and I'm gonna find the center of the object. So I need to snap to center midpoint. I need to come over here and snap to midpoint. And what I'm going to do is instead of drawing a circle here, I'm going to draw a proper polygon. So we had our circle tool below that we have the polygon tool. And you'll see in this bottom corner here, it says size six. That allows me to draw a hexagon. So I'm going to snap on the center. I'm going to drag it out and you can see that the shape of the or the position of the polygon changes depending on how I rotate. I would like to snap onto this axis and it talks about a radius and inscribed radius. Uh, you can work that out with something. I generally try to create some geometry around and snap to it, but right now I'm going to do that and I'm going to type a value of 20. That gives me a hexagon and then what I'm going to do, oh sorry, my mistake, I wanted to make that 15. And so all I do is retype the number. I haven't clicked, I haven't done anything else, so I can type this as many times as I like until I'm happy with the size that I want. So 15 is what I'm going to do, what I've said in the drawing that I put up earlier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push pull that up by 10 millimeters. And the final thing I'm gonna do is erase those two guidelines. So please pause and do that now using this polygon tool. While you do that, I'm gonna shift over to here we have a block in the middle. We're going to do something similar once again. I'm going to get the hang of this because we're going to do a bit of repeating. I'm going to find the center of my shape using my guidelines. I'm going to come over to the polygon tool as I've just done, but this time, well, because it says um, side six, I want to do a pentagon. Before I click anything, I've selected the tool. You can see my tool has changed. My cursor has changed in my mouse, but what I do before anything else is I type the number five, and you can see the number change in the bottom right hand corner. I hit enter, and the actual shape at my cursor changes. This becomes a polygon, so I'm going a pentagon. I snap on the center, I pull out in this direction here, and in this case, the value I want as a radius is going to be 25, and that's a fairly large polygon there. I'm going to 
push-pull, I'm going to take that and I'm going to push that one down by 5 millimeters. That's what that shape is meant to look like. I'm going to raise my two guidelines. I'd like you to pause and do that now, please. Right, we're over to this one here. And yet again, I'm going to do the same thing just to illustrate how this polygon tool works and a slightly different uh, thing that you can do with the push-pull. So find the center, come over to the polygon, select my polygon tool here. I want eight sides. In this case, I want an octagon. I'm going to snap onto the center. I'm going to pull this way. The uh, radius that we're going to be using or typing at this stage is 15. And then what I want to do is I want to not pull this shape up or down. I can take that and I can pull it up or down. In fact, what I want to do is take this outside surface. I'm going to use push pull and I'm going to push that down by 30 millimeters. So you're not restricted to just using the um, surface that's inside the polygon or the circle. You can also do the surface that's outside the polygon or circle. Delete the guidelines and this shape is complete. Please pause and do that now. While you do that, I'm going to reposition. Remember, I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse to do this. Right, so now we're going to move on to a new tool. We have this block here. And I'm actually going to first take you back to the line tool. I mentioned the line tool earlier. I'm going to use this first. I'm also going to use my orbit. And I can use that at any stage by clicking down on my scroll wheel and holding it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my line and I'm going to snap onto midpoint. Now I can go various places. You can see it will draw parallel to the red. In this case, I want to draw a line there. And it has been snapped to that point and come up with a magenta line. SketchUp automatically understands a 45 degree angle. It thinks that's what I want to do. And in this case, it's actually correct. So I'm going to click and create that surface. That means I have, a, or that line, that gives me two separate surfaces here. This is the one that's of interest to me. Now the tool we're going to use, we're going to go to the push-pull menu, and if I use push-pull and did this, it would simply take that off. That's not what I want, and push-pull works on flat surface to flat surface. So I'm going to undo, but underneath on this push-pull menu that comes out, I have a tool here called Follow Me, and I'm going to click Follow Me. Now it does help me to see a bit more of my top surface in this case, so I'm going to orbit round. I'm going to come highlight that surface there. I'm going to click and hold my mouse and then I'm going to drag and you can see I have a red line. It knows what I want to do. It's working out a path that I want to follow. I can come around. I can keep going there and it understands what I'm trying to do there. It's gone to the 45 degree miter and when I release what I have just done is chamfered or beveled all the edges on this shape. Now, there are other ways of using the Follow Me tool. Um, you can ignore that little endpoint that's a remnant that SketchUp's leaving at the moment. It is a bug, I believe. Um, there are other ways of determining the path that gets followed for Follow Me tool. There are some really good videos out there for you to watch to do that. Uh, this is a simple way of using it uh, for quite a simple little feature that we put onto woodwork and furniture and bits and pieces at some times. So that's just a simple way of using the Follow Me tool. You can see what it does. Uh, it doesn't have to be a straight line either. Uh, so please pause and do that now. All right, so from here we're going to go to another tool and that is also under this push-pull menu um, system here. So we've got push-pull, we've got follow me, and the bottom one of these is called offset. Now what offset does is when I have a surface like that and it's a bounded surface, it knows how that works. So I can click on that and I can drag. I can take it outwards, but I'm going to drag it inwards like this. And that gives me a line that is a fixed distance around, same distance from each of the edges. In this case, I want that distance from this line to this line to be 15 and I'm going to type 15 and it's going to do nothing. So you saw that what I did is I moved my mouse and demonstrated and things like that. I can't do that. So I'm going to go back to the offset tool. I'm going to take my surface. I'm going to drag there. I'm going to release my mouse button and I'm going to immediately type 15. If I do not release my mouse button and then type, it will not do it for me. I can, of course, put guidelines down and snap to things. That would work too. 
but otherwise it is important that I release type and that will work if I do anything else it will not allow me to type the dimension so I'm going to use that I'm going to first push pull this surface let me just space and select that push pull that and I'm going to take that up by 15 millimeters and then I'm going to demonstrate the offset tool once again over here offset tool that surface there I'm going to take that five millimeters whoops five and it didn't work so let's try that again drop there five enter and there's my offset push pull push down five millimeters okay so just to remind you you're using the offset tool that is this one here at the bottom under the push pull menu uh, my first offset was 15 millimeters I pu pulled upwards by 15 millimeters I did another offset inwards of five millimeters and I pushed down by five millimeters please pause the video and do that now okay so this is the last shape and this is an interesting little tool in its own right there are different ways to use it now it is going to be the scale tool now we're not going to deal with the move and I'm not going to deal with rotate at this stage but the scale tool can be useful shortcut is S and I can scale whole shapes I can select all three double triple click and select to do that and if I then hit the scale tool what will happen is it will come up with all these little green dots or handles that will allow me to scale around so I can scale this for instance that way and you'll see that it gives me a value and that's a multiplier a factor so I'm going to undo that um, I can also do it across this way and I can do two sides at once uh, I can do from here I can hit my control key on a PC option on a Mac and it will scale equally around the center uh, that's on a three-dimensional shape I don't want to do that I actually just want to scale this top surface instead of triple clicking I'm going to double click that selects the surface and the lines around it now when I hit the scale tool all I get are the handles around this top surface so I'm not going to affect the bottom at all uh, that will give me a an angle there or an angle on both sides or what I'm going to do is I'm going to select corner to corner but I'm hitting control so it goes around the corner I'm going to do that and I'm going to type whoops so I pushed it in click I'm going to type 0.5 and what that's done is it's given me nope I have done the wrong thing so let me undo oh that's what my problem was I had already done it so let's go back to the regular block I had to do a control twice so I'm going to click on there I'm going to push that in there and type 0.5 and that has given me a conical shape with the point cut off uh, and what you will find is that the length of this line here let me zoom in uh, I can show you that if I bring up my entity information and I select this line at the bottom uh, it should tell me my length here is 80 millimeters and if I click this one at the top I want just the line it'll tell me my length is 40 millimeters so it has halved the length of the lines on the top there and changed the area accordingly and that is the scale tool so a reminder let me undo that we're going to take the block we're going to double click the top surface we're going to select the scale tool which is under the move menu so it's this one here we're going to click on the corner over there we're going to click down but I'm going to hit control so that it scales around the center I'm going to push enter inwards but I'm going to type 0 0.5 and hit enter to get my size correct so you might want to pause and do this now or otherwise just watch to see where we're going with the end of the video and come back to it as you like so what I've done is put up a list of videos that are to do with the tools that we've used and a couple of others as well I'll put these into the description of the video these are videos not created by myself and as per the caution they weren't actually created for SketchUp for schools the interface will look a little different but the function should be the same uh, go watch them you can learn a lot from them uh, I'm not going to cover it now I haven't covered it in a great depth and this video is already long enough 
Uh, and also just a reminder, I used a variety of shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. So this is the list that's there. And I'm going to refer you to the video that I created previously, Intro to SketchUp for Schools Part 4, which deals with keyboard shortcuts. There is the link, and that will be in the video description as well. So thank you for watching. I hope that has helped, and I hope that has been useful to you. Uh, it is just an introduction. There is still a long way to go and a lot to learn. Uh, remember to use your instructor. Remember to watch other videos. and. Practice, practice, and practice. Uh, thank you very much for watching.